Section 13 of An Essay Concerning Human Understanding, Book 2, by John Locke. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Chapters 18 to 19 Of Other Simple Modes and of the Modes of Thinking. Of Other Simple Modes one though i have in the foregoing chapter shown how from simple ideas motion taken in by sensation the mind comes to extend itself even to infinity which however it may of all others seem most remote from any sensible perception yet at last hath nothing in it but what is made out of simple ideas received into the mind by the senses and afterwards there put together by the faculty the mind has to repeat its own ideas though i say these might be instances enough of simple modes of the simple ideas of sensation and suffice to show how the mind comes by them yet i shall for method's sake though briefly give an account of some few more and then proceed to more complex ideas two to slide roll tumble walk creep run dance leap skip and abundance of others that might be named are words which are no sooner heard but every one who understands english has presently in his mind distinct ideas which are all but the different modifications of motion modes of motion answer those of extension swift and slow are two different ideas of motion the measures whereof are made of the distances of time and space put together so they are complex ideas comprehending time and space with motion three the like variety have we in sounds every articulate word is a different modification of sound by which we see that from the sense of hearing by such modifications the mind may be furnished with distinct ideas to almost an infinite number sounds also besides the distinct cries of birds and beasts are modified by diversity of notes of different length put together which make that complex idea called a tune which a musician may have in his mind when he hears or makes no sound at all by reflecting on the ideas of those sounds so put together silently in his own fancy four those of colors are also various some we take notice of as the different degrees or as they are termed shades of the same color but since we very seldom make assemblages of colors either for use or delight but figure is taken in also and has its part in it as in painting weaving needleworks etc those which are taken notice of do most commonly belong to mixed modes as being made up of ideas of diverse kinds viz figure and color such as beauty rainbow etc five all compounded tastes and smells are also modes made up of the simple ideas of these senses but they being such as generally we have no names for are less taken notice of and cannot be set down in writing and therefore must be left without enumeration to the thoughts and experience of my reader six in general it may be observed that those simple modes which are considered but as different degrees of the same simple idea though they are in themselves many of them very distinct ideas yet have ordinarily no distinct names nor are much taken notice of as distinct ideas where the difference is but very small between them whether men have neglected these modes and have given no names to them as wanting measures nicely to distinguish them or because when they are so distinguished that knowledge would not be of general or necessary use i leave it to the thoughts of others it is sufficient to my purpose to show that all our simple ideas come to our minds only by sensation and reflection and that when the mind has them it can variously repeat and compound them and so make new complex ideas but though white red or sweet etc have not been modified or made into complex ideas by several combinations so as to be named and thereby ranked into species yet some others of the simple ideas viz those of unity duration motion etc above instanced in as also power in thinking have been thus modified to a great variety of complex ideas with names belonging to them seven the reason whereof i suppose has been this that the great concernment of men being with men one amongst another 
the knowledge of men and their actions and the signifying of them to one another was most necessary and therefore they made ideas of actions very nicely modified and gave those complex ideas names that they might the more easily record and discourse of those things they were daily conversant in without long ambages and circumlocutions and that the things they were continually to give and receive information about might be the easier and quicker understood that this is so and that men in framing different complex ideas and giving them names have been much governed by the end of speech in general which is a very short and expedite way of conveying their thoughts one to another is evident in the names which in several arts have been found out and applied to several complex ideas of modified actions belonging to their several trades for dispatch sake in their direction or discourses about them which ideas are not generally framed in the minds of men not conversant about these operations and thence the words that stand for them by the greatest part of men of the same language are not understood for example culture drilling filtration cohibition are words standing for certain complex ideas which being seldom in the minds of any but those few whose particular employments do at every turn suggest them to their thoughts those names of them are not generally understood but by smiths and chemists who having framed the complex ideas which these words stand for and having given names to them or received them from others upon hearing of these names in communication readily conceive those ideas in their minds as by cohabation all the simple ideas of distilling and the pouring the liquor distilled from anything back upon the remaining matter and distilling it again thus we see that there are great varieties of simple ideas as of tastes and smells which have no names and of modes many more which either not having been generally enough observed or else not being of any great use to be taken notice of in the affairs and converse of men they have not had names given to them and so pass not for species this we will have occasion hereafter to consider more at large when we come to speak of words chapter nineteen of the modes of thinking one when the mind turns its view inwards upon itself and contemplates its own actions thinking is the first that occurs in it the mind observes a great variety of modifications and from thence receives distinct ideas thus the perception which actually accompanies and is annexed to any impression on the body made by an external object being distinct from all other modifications of thinking furnishes the mind with a distinct idea which we call sensation which is as it were the actual entrance of any idea into the understanding by the senses the same idea when it again recurs without the operation of the like object on the external sensory is remembrance if it be sought after by the mind and with pain and endeavour found and brought again in view it is recollection if it be held there long under attentive consideration it is contemplation when ideas float in our mind without any reflection or regard of the understanding it is that which the french call reverie our language has scarce a name for it when the ideas that offer themselves for i have observed in another place whilst we are awake there will always be a train of ideas succeeding one another in our minds are taken notice of and as it were registered in the memory it is attention when the mind with great earnestness and of choice fixes its view on any idea considers it on all sides and will not be called off by the ordinary solicitation of other ideas it is that we call intention or study sleep without dreaming is rest from all these and dreaming itself is the having of ideas whilst the outward senses are stopped so that they receive not outward objects with their usual quickness in the mind not suggested by any external objects or known occasion nor under any choice of conduct of the understanding at all and whether that which we call ecstasy be not dreaming with the eyes open i leave to be examined two these are some few instances of those various modes of thinking which the mind may observe in itself and so have as distinct ideas of as it hath of white and red a square or a circle i do not pretend to enumerate them all 
nor to treat at large of this set of ideas which are got from reflection that would be to make a volume it suffices to my present purpose to have shown here by some few examples of what sort these ideas are and how the mind comes by them especially since i shall have occasion hereafter to treat more at large of reasoning judging volition and knowledge which are some of the most considerable operations of the mind and modes of thinking three for perhaps it may not be an unpardonable digression nor wholly impertinent to our present design if we reflect here upon the different state of the mind in thinking which those instances of attention reverie and dreaming etc before mentioned naturally enough suggest that there are ideas some or other always present in the mind of a waking man every one's experience convinces him though the mind employs itself about them with several degrees of attention sometimes the mind fixes itself with so much earnestness on the contemplation of some objects that it turns their ideas on all sides remarks their relations and circumstances and views every part so nicely and with such intention that it shuts out all other thoughts and takes no notice of the ordinary impressions made them on the senses which at another season would produce very sensible perceptions at other times it barely observes the train of ideas that succeed in the understanding without directing and perusing any of them and at other times it lets them pass almost quite unregarded as faint shadows that make no impression four this difference of intention and remission of the mind in thinking with a great variety of degrees between earnest study and very near minding nothing at all every one i think has experimented in himself trace it a little farther and you find the mind in sleep retired as it were from the senses and out of the reach of those motions made on the organs of sense which at other times produce very vivid and sensible ideas i need not for this instance in those who sleep out whole stormy nights without hearing the thunder or seeing the lightning or feeling the shaking of the house which are sensible enough to those who are waking but in this retirement of the mind from the senses it often retains as yet more loose and incoherent manner of thinking which we call dreaming and last of all sound sleep closes the scene quite and puts an end to all appearances this i think almost every one has experience of in himself and his own observation without difficulty leads him thus far that which i would farther conclude from hence is that since the mind can sensibly put on and at several times several degrees of thinking and be sometimes even in a waking man so remiss as to have thoughts dim and obscure to that degree that they are very little removed from none at all and at last in the dark retirements of sound sleep loses the sight perfectly of all ideas whatsoever since i say this is evidently so in matter of fact and constant experience i ask whether it be not probable that thinking is the action and not the essence of the soul since the operations of agents will easily admit of intention and remission but the essences of things not conceived capable of any such variation but this by and by. End of section 13